स्वागत है न्यूज़ बच्चे गैलेक्सी दिस मॉर्निंग लाइव माता पर लाइव अन्य आज हम ये अलग तरीके से एक्साइटेड सो कि नमनी वी हैव अ स्पेशल गेस्ट एकदम है हम रो आज एकदम विशेष अति नुनसा रो वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट लाइक ब्रजेश आज मेंशन तारा वहाँ को पारे वाले हमने सान वाला वीडियो सा इंट्रोडक्शन वीडियो सा त्यो पहले एरिया लो तस्वीर अतिथि लाए मेरे स्वागत दारी चाऊ डॉक्टर थोमस प्रिंस नेपाल का लागी जर्मनी का राजदूत होने उनसा सन 1959 में जन्मी एक डॉक्टर प्रिंस ले साउथ एशिया इंस्टीट्यूट बाटा विद्या बारी दी करनु भाई कुछ हा सन 1959 में यूरोपीय संघ निर्वाचन परिवेशन मिशन और उमा सहवागी होने करियर को शुरुआत करेगा डॉक्टर प्रिंस ले जर्मन विदेश कार्यालय में मंत्री को सलाहकार रक्षा मंत्रालय को सलाहकार संघीय विदेश कार्यालय निर्देशक जर्मन इंस्टीट्यूट ताइपे को महानिर्देशक जस्ता महत्वपूर्ण जिम्मेवारी हरू संभाली सकनु भाई कुछ हा बंगलादेश का लागी जर्मनी का राजदूत का रूप में ढाका में तीन वर्ष जिम्मेवारी निभाई सके का डॉक्टर प्रिंस सन 2021 को सितंबर देखी नेपाल में होनु होन्सा तीन ही नेपाल का लागी जर्मनी का राजदूत डॉक्टर थोमस प्रिंस आज जो को हमरो अतिथि होनु होन्सा आजू डॉक्टर प्रिंस एम्बेसडर ऑफ जर्मनी फॉर नेपाल अनिश्चित हो Uh, I'll start with the question. First of all, I mean, as our, our audience must have already seen, you are you know, on the attire of a cyclist, and there's a cycle <laughs> behind you. Let's start with that to begin with. Can you give us a background? What, what was the cycling? What's the cycle doing on the set? Uh, where do you take it? Well, um, I'm I'm a long time cyclist, and I love cycling. And uh, I had the idea to cycle from here. Kathmandu to Dhaka. My wife is from Dhaka and she went back home for uh, Christmas holidays and I thought I will join her <laughs> uh, with a bicycle. Uh -huh. And I started here at the German Embassy in Kathmandu and I went to the German Embassy in Dhaka and that took me nine days and uh, it's approximately 1,000 kilometer okay. and so it was a great adventure okay. and um, somehow um, it got quite known that I was cycling, <laughs> and so okay. that's why the cycle was here. <laughs> are you an adventurous person, or uh, this was your first long trip, or you have been doing this quite frequently? I, I do that regularly, but uh, usually I do it during my holidays, uh, mainly in Germany and Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've done long distance trips before, but that was the first one here in the region. Okay. We will come back to the cyclist, uh, because this is something we are very both interested in, because <laughs> both Brajesh and I yeah. do cycling. Uh, we, uh, we hear that uh, there is a photo that we want to show our mm -hmm. audience. Um, um, uh, this is probably from your trip? or No, that was, when that was uh, ex uh, the day before I, I was leaving. We've done these photos at the German Embassy here in Kathmandu. Just before you left for the yeah, trip? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we will come back to that uh, uh, event very shortly, mm -hmm. but uh, let's just go back to the diplomacy now. You have been in Nepal now, uh, and uh, we, uh, from what we understand, this may uh, probably be your last stint. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are you sure, are you, how sure are you that this will be your last stint as a diplomat uh, of, of a career stint? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure because uh, I'm 63 years old and okay. we retire at the age of 66. And okay. So I hope to retire from Kathmandu. Okay. So, so you've uh, been posted to various other countries and uh, different cities and uh, compared to all those, uh, Nepal, Kathmandu, what is the difference? Oh, well, that is uh, every, every city, every mm. uh, country, every job is different and uh, you can't compare it. Mm. Uh, here, for instance, we, we do a lot of um, uh, development cooperation and mm. previous jobs I have to been doing more on on the business side so it depends on mm. where where you are so mm. can be totally different mm. the job description uh, what sort of homework or preparations do you do before be getting posted to some different city different place different country well what what i try to do is uh, first of all to to read a lot about the country mm. to uh, do some research mm -hmm. and so on and I have to say that already during my university times, I studied uh, South Asian history and politics. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I have a certain affiliation mm -hmm. to that part of the world. Mm -hmm. 
And when it came to my last posting, and I was asked, so what, where, where would you like to go? Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. said, um, Nepal is uh, vacant, and I would like to go there. Mm -hmm. It's in, in that part of the world where uh, I think I, I can do make a change. Right. And, and um, that fitted very much right. and, uh, to the things I wanted to do. So I just want to add on that, um, like, you know, Nepal and uh, Germany, the history goes back quite a few years, mm. you know. What are the main areas uh, of the German-Nepal <coughs> cooperation? Where does Germany very much involve itself in, in Nepal? in terms of development and... Well, our diplomatic relations go back to uh, the end of the 50s right. already, and we are here with our development cooperation program since early 60s. Right. So we have been uh, working with Nepal now since many decades. Right. And uh, we, I, I think we can say we, we are good friends. We have no bilateral problems, issues whatsoever. Right. And uh, Germany is interested in supporting Nepal, supporting the democratic development of the country, mm. supporting the people on their journey to uh, become a middle income country. Right. And um, so development cooperation is a big part of our Mm -hmm. uh, of our job here. Right. And we are active now in, in mainly in the field of healthcare. Um, then um, energy, right. renewable energy, okay. and um, business development. Okay. They, these are the three areas where we try now to, to focus our development cooperation. Uh, if I can remember, Nepalese passport uh, holders or Nepali citizens, they did not require any visa to visit Germany quite uh, some time back. I guess uh, till late early or early 80s, uh, mm. th that system was there. Uh, but now it has changed. Uh, do you have any idea why it changed? Well, the, the world is changing and uh, people are, have more opportunities to yeah. travel and we have to have certain um, control and restrictions. Uh, mm. If we would uh, not have the, the visa uh, requirement, then I think we would have a lot of Nepalis visiting us mm. and staying there. Are there, uh, are there a lot of Nepalis like, uh, studying in uh, Germany uh, as we speak? Or? Yeah, well, we, I think we have about 2,000 Nepalis right now in okay. German universities. Uh, German universities are free. The, we do not have fees, so when you go somewhere else, you have to pay for it. In okay. Germany, you don't have to pay for it. Nice. And um, so um, it makes it easier to access German universities. Mm -hmm. Then we have, a couple of years ago, so we have uh, changed our system in a way that uh, the master classes are taught in English language. Right. So it's not necessarily to be fluent in German. and. Uh, English language, free universities, mm -hmm. this is very attractive. So mm -hmm. that is why uh, people from all over the world come to study in Germany. And it's high quality education. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, German uh, cooperation extends to the s sector of health also. And mm -hmm. uh, just recently, uh, uh, you, the government has donated uh, 1.5 million dosage mm -hmm. of uh, um, BioNTech <laughs> Pfizer yeah. to, uh, to Nepal. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? And also, can you tell us what are the other areas in healthcare that you are supporting in Nepal? Mm. Yeah, if, um, the day before yesterday, I handed over 1.5 million doses of um, BioNTech Pfizer uh, vaccine, which is uh, a new development specialized to fight this uh, Omicron variant. Right. And uh, it will be used here mainly to booster, um, f as a booster for elderly people. Okay. <clears throat> and it's uh, part of our cooperation with the health sector in Nepal. All in all, we have, since the beginning of the um, pandemic, donated about 5.5 million okay. of vaccines. Okay. And uh, Nepal is uh, one of the 10 biggest receivers of our um, vaccines. And um, we are the second biggest donor in this COVAX initiative, which right. distributes um, COVID vaccine worldwide. Right. And uh, you might know that this vaccine was invented in Germany. Um, and so we, we are somehow proud of this um, invention. Mm -hmm. And um, we have right from the beginning, we have also tried, <coughs> sorry, tried to, to help others to yeah. fight this <coughs> pandemic. Right. 
and what, we are, what else we do in the healthcare sector. Uh, after the 2015 uh, earthquake, mm. uh, there was an urgent demand of rebuilding hospitals because they were just f down. Right. And it was about construction. Right. And uh, we have, for a couple of years, we have been uh, helping Nepal in uh, rebuilding this infrastructure. Now, uh, this job is done. Right. And we, we are now shifting from infrastructure to uh, more training. We are training midwives, and we, we are also trying to bring healthcare to remote areas. Right. That is the, the focus now. Okay. Uh, we will continue this conversation. We have to take a short break. Okay. Uh, it's a short break. A break by Ferry, Nepal Clair, German Garage Dutsa, and we pay Kura Garjo, and a short break. Galaxy This Morning Live co-sponsor Goodwill Finance Limited Financing for success since 1995 Associate Sponsor Everest Bank Limited Digu Darilu Raviswasilo Nepal Ul House Hotahiti Asan Kathmandu Breakfast is swagat so very exciting. As I am, I could have got some Germany and Nepal. Like the Rajput Sri Thomas Prince song, who also could have come and lagged Who welcome back after this break? Uh, earlier, uh, we used to export a lot of garments and carpets to Germany, and there is also a body called uh, German Nepal Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Hmm. So, how is it functioning now? Oh well, it's. Um it's functioning well, I think. They, they meet regularly. We had uh, a couple of months ago, we had a trade fair in mm. the, um, on the premises of right. the German residents. And um, I think they are doing well. Right. Um, now, after COVID, uh, the fair business has started again. Mm. There were quite some uh, Nepali um, businessmen on the last Domo Tax Fair mm -hmm. in Germany mm -hmm. were um, Carpets, pashmina products, right. and so on right. are exhibited. So I think uh, they're doing fine. Let's just follow up on your uh, Bridges' question. What is the environment like from your point of view as an ambassador who's now been posted here? Mm. Of uh, doing business in Nepal, how do uh, do your counterparts in Germany think of uh, Nepal as a you know partnership destination? Yep. I have to say we do not have too much investment here in Nepal. Right. Uh, we are doing trade. But uh, Nepal is not a major production hub for right. German investment. Right. Right. What I see what's coming up is um, we, what we're doing more and more is pharmaceutical products. Mm -hmm. And what I also see is IT services. Mm -hmm. There is investment from Germany in IT services here in, in Nepal. And what I hear from the investors, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. So there is um, the, the human resources trained in, in uh, Kathmandu in Nepal mm -hmm. um, belong obviously to the best you can get worldwide. So there is a very high standard in, in IT programming services and so on. Okay. And I hope that uh, more and more will come mm -hmm. and um, use this uh, okay. fantastically trained young people here. Okay. Oh, I would like to come back to the cycle again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you did a very tough uh, <laughs> cycling to <laughs> Dhaka from uh, Kathmandu, uh, as you've mentioned, almost mm. 1,000 kilometers. So what was your experience? Can you share some interesting uh, experiences, what happened crossing the border? Uh, 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 well, it was, was a fantastic tour, a nice adventure. <laughs> and when, whenever I was on the bike, everything was fine. Yeah? As soon <laughs> when I went off the bike, the problem started. <laughs> so first problem was uh, leaving Nepal at the border in Raksal. Mm -hmm. uh, there are thousands of people crossing every right. day, mm -hmm. but um, I was the one with the passport. All the others, Nepalese <laughs> Indians, they do not know the, need the passport. I needed a stamp. And I came to this border station and the guy was sitting there and I think he had seen a passport for the first time in his life <laughs> 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 and um, then he had to stamp it and he didn't know how to work this fingerprinting machine uh. and uh, the camera connected to the computer 
and he had to um, get a crash course and all that, and it <laughs> took three hours to leave uh, Nepal to, to, and to enter India. So border crossing is still, uh, it's still a hassle, I think. And d d despite all these modern equipment, right. it hasn't become easier. What about like, uh, you mentioned like even crossing India into Bangladesh is also a problem. <laughs> that was the same. It was <laughs> difficult getting out of India. <laughs> <laughs> Not in time. Getting no, out. Getting, getting out. That was, um, <laughs> was also a nice story. This uh, lady at um, the border <laughs> saw my diplomatic passport and somehow she got afraid and phoned her superior somewhere and uh, got the message, oh, that's a VIP, and this border crossing is not for VIPs. Okay. <laughs> but they have a separate crossing for VIPs, that means. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm not a VIP, I'm a biker. <laughs> and 20 meters further, there was already a delegation from the Bangladeshi side waiting for me with a bunch of flowers. Because <laughs> they, my, my colleague here from um, the uh, Bangladeshi ambassador had informed the border posting that I was coming and so they were waiting there with a camera team and flowers. The Indians didn't want to let me go. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to keep me inside. The people, yeah. people, people across the Indian border at Bangladesh, they were very eager to welcome their son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I have been working in, in Nepal. My wife is from Nepal, uh, and from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. My wife is from Bangladesh, from Dhaka. And I've been uh, working there 2015 to 2018. I have lots of friends in Bangladesh uh -huh. and therefore it was a little bit like coming home. <laughs> and how, was it like a, how long was the trip again? How long was your trip to cycle? Uh, all in all I cycled nine days. Nine days. Mm. From Kathmandu to Dhaka. Exactly. And so, uh, what sort of special arrangements you did yeah. in your uh, uh, bike uh, uh, for the trip? Anything special? On the bike? Uh, did you do anything to the cycle? Did you uh, do alter it, uh, anything? Or? No, I, I had of course my, my luggage with me. Right and um, sleeping bag, tent, everything for, ah. for emergencies. And mm -hmm. um, so I didn't pre-plan it right. because you never know where you end up in the evening. If you have a flat tire, that costs you an hour or so. Mm -hmm. uh, I just started. Um, ah. And uh, what, what about the accommodation and food? How did you manage that? I mean, you didn't cook well, yourself. I, I, or I didn't plan the accommodation. I I tried to end up in a in a city in the evening okay. uh, to find a hotel, but I also was prepared in case that I can't make it to a city. I could have slept in a tent. Oh, okay. uh, food I didn't take with me. I bought it wherever mm. I was, mm. and um, so mainly surviving on bananas. And <laughs> <laughs> So it was a one-man trip. You were all alone. Yeah, I was all alone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, well, uh, I, sometimes I'm told, didn't you have security with you? And I say, who, which security <laughs> is going to do such a crazy trip? Yeah. <laughs> but so, did, so were you in like, I know there's some security, obviously, as a diplomat, it must be involved there. Did you have like, you know, you, you, you were on the phone or you, you had a, um, I don't know, walkie-talkie or anything with you? No, I, just only my normal phone I had okay. with me. Uh, okay. And um, I, of course, I kept in touch every day with my wife mm -hmm. and uh, so at least she knew where I was. Wow. <laughs> and health-wise, any, any, do you have any issues with health or did you have any, did you prepare yourself? Well, food was, uh, once I had a problem with uh, eating a birani at the street side oh. and uh, so from then on I decided better to survive on bananas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I see. <laughs> so, uh, you said that th this is going to be uh, uh, the end of your diplomatic career in Nepal. Mm. So how do you look forward to your uh, remaining tenure here? What are your plans? How do you see it going? But for, for the rest of my time yes. in, in Nepal? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm continuing with the good relations we have with Nepal, mm. um, getting more to, to see of Nepal. Right. So I'm planning now to do a, a hiking trip to mm. Kosai Kunda. Mm. in April and I would like to do a bicycle tour on the Annapurna circuit oh, wow. and so I have some plans for uh, for the next couple of months and right. let's see. Uh, as a diplomat, uh, and now you have seen many countries, a 35 year mm. career, you have seen many countries, you come from Germany. Now looking to Nepal, what are the things that Nepal, as a, as a guest of, mm -hmm. of Nepal or diplomat, what do you think are the things that Nepal should focus on if it wants to 
elevate itself to a middle-income country. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you suggest as a diplomat uh, mm -hmm. for Nepal? Well, as, uh, as I told you, uh, we, we, had, we have this in German investment here in IT. Right. They are procro programming algorithms, artificial intelligence, right. mainly for chemical industry in right. Germany. And I asked them, how is it investing in Nepal? Mm. And they said, we, there's great human resources here in that okay. field. What I could imagine is a uh, joint effort, government, universities, and business sitting together, promoting this sector, okay. thinking about how can we bring it forward? How can we make it even better? Okay. Uh, a joint effort to um, bring it forward. That is, I think, what could, could help the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, in terms of the stability, like, you know, I'm sorry, I just mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, U.S. has seen our politics is uh, very, you know, in a way, in unstable, mm -hmm. at least from Nepali point of view, we can say that. Uh, do you think um, that there's ways to make it more stable? What are the good, good examples you have seen from mm -hmm. other countries that might exist that uh, we can make it more stable? What do you say about that? <laughs> That is very difficult to say. First of all, I think uh, Nepal is on, on a good way of development. This 2015 constitution now has gone through two elections. Right. And these elections were free and fair. Right. And this is already a great success. We have had local elections and uh, we see the system is working. Yeah. When I travel in Nepal and I meet people in, in the provinces and in uh, Karnali or somewhere mm. else and I always ask, what is the f constitution functioning, the mm. federalism? And in, it's interesting to hear from people in the provinces, they are all very positive about it. Mm. And uh, so I think now, the, the services are coming to the people right. more than before and uh, the system is functioning. So I'm quite optimistic. Okay. Uh, of course, political stability is needed if you, for instance, come to a ministry uh, three times a year and three times you have a different partner <laughs> talking to. This is, uh, could be improved. Right. Uh, Okay. There we need a little bit more predictability and stability in, in the decision-making process. Right. Uh, I'm not talking about the minister, minister right. level, I'm right. talking also about the bureaucrats. It right. um, would be better to sit on one desk for a little bit longer, right. and uh, that would make it easier for us. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, it was an uh, absolute pleasure to have you here. And all the best for your uh, cycle two to Annapurna base camp. For that, you'll have to buy a new cycle because <laughs> whatever goes to the set, it uh, stays here as a souvenir. Yep. You can see the We're books and it. the paintings. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping your cycle. <laughs> <laughs> no comment? <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so, uh, so much, uh, Dr. Prince, for coming to our show. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. And as a token of appreciation, this is in Nepali. You came and were very uh -huh. happy. So okay. just for you to take uh, with you. Uh, maybe have it in your uh -huh. room or office, you know. From all of us, we uh -huh. have signed it. So all of us. So. Okay, great. That is a nice memory on, on your show. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. Again, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to continue.